Hello everybody, how are you doing? In this web view, I've drawn out a proposal connecting the commuter railway lines through a new tunnel underneath Lower Manhattan. This project will involve the construction of four new stations, Queen Central, Williamsburg, World Trade Center, and Newport. And it'll have tracks directly connecting to all the railway lines in both New Jersey and in Long Island allowing for trains to seamlessly go through this new connector here without forcing commuters to change trains at certain stations. This is actually part two of a two-part webio series. In part one, I discussed possibilities of expanding service along the Northeast Corridor by the construction of two new tracks between Newark and Penn Station. It also involved the construction of Penn Station North and a direct connection to Grand Central, allowing through train service throughout the entire system. So before I get into the details of this web view, I'm going to go through why this proposal matters. So the current state of New York's commuter rail system is that Manhattan itself is well connected to the entire tri-state metro area by regional rail but none of these railway lines directly connect to Lower Manhattan. If you think about it, all the main lines go to Penn Station or Grand Central. Both are located in Midtown. These completely avoid the financial district in Lower Manhattan to the south. So what? So before I get into my proposal itself, I'm going to start at a more abstract level and show you how commuter rail systems around city centers are designed. The first type is the hub ring. So in the hub ring, the city center is served by a ring of rail hubs, each with lines reaching out to distinct suburbs. So think of this as three different termini in the city center. This serves the northern suburbs, this serves the eastern suburbs, and this one only serves the western suburbs. So this is very efficient for suburb to CBD travel, especially if you work right around where the station is located. However, this is extremely inefficient for intercity transportation and suburb to suburb trips. So intercity transportation refers to transportation from one point in the city center to another point in the city center. So let's say you live in one of the western suburbs, but your work is towards the northern end of the city center. So you get off the train at this station here. How do you go all the way here? It could be a couple miles. You may have to take a subway or bus or go by foot. It's much more complicated. Also, suburb to suburb travel is very difficult as well because there's no through service on trains. So you'll have to go to the city center, go through the city, change at another station and go out. You cannot take a train directly through. Examples of the system include London, Paris, Boston and Mumbai. So London has a ring of stations all around Westminster and the city of London. For example, Liverpool Street, Paddington, Victoria, Waterloo, those are all terminal stations serving respective areas. Paris has the same system as well. They have the Gare du Nord, Gare de l'Est, and a couple other stations as well. Mumbai has the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus to the east and Churchgate to the west. And Boston has North Station and South Station. In none of these cases are the railway lines between different terminals easily connected. So another type of commuter rail layout is known as a through hub. So in this, the city center is served by a single large unified railway hub. So basically all the lines to the east and all the lines to the west converge into a mega line going to the city center and serving it at a single point. This allows very easy operation of through service on unified rolling stock. So for example, in this case, it will be most efficient not to run many different single operators, but to make a unified rolling stock system that connects the eastern suburbs seamlessly with the western suburbs. It's much more flexible in nature. This allows for easier suburb to suburb travel than hub ring layout, especially if you're going from one side of the city to the other side. You don't have to go into the city, find your ways through the city, and take another train out. It's single train throughout the whole system. However, there are also issues with this proposal as well. 
there's possible overcrowding at the central hub. So when everybody conglomerates at the central hub, all the suburban commuters will have to get off here, all the subways around here will be really crowded. The hub is also not within local distance of most city center. So with the hub ring, at least all of the city center was in reach of a railway terminus, but here we cannot even say that. Many of the outer reaches of the city center are not served. So if you're coming into the city, you may have to take a subway to go up or around. Not to mention, this also invites potential for backtracking. And backtracking is basically when you're going one direction, and you have to basically switch directions to go to your final destination. So if you live here and work here, you'll have to go all the way in here and then backtrack to subway to go out here. That's very inefficient and it's not efficient in managing traffic flows, especially through the station right here. So examples of this include Berlin, Amsterdam, Barcelona, and Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is a little different because you technically have three stations. You have the 30th Street Station, then you have Suburban Station, and Market East. This was to connect the Reading Railroad with the Pennsylvania Railroad, but there's still no doubt that parts of lower and upper downtown Philadelphia are not served by the main trunk line. So what's New York? New York is mostly a through hub but it's not quite operationally one. It is two hubs, Penn Station and Grand Central, but it is operationally three distinct termini. So New Jersey Transit operates its own hub to Penn Station, Long Island Railroad treats Penn Station as a terminus itself, and then you have Metro North. Only Amtrak has through trains going through here. So it's basically, it's operationally a hub ring almost, but it looks like a through hub. Only Amtrak passes through Penn Station. Besides that, no trains go through all of Manhattan. So no regional railway hub is located in lower Manhattan because of this. When you have two railway hubs, both in midtown Manhattan right here, I know it's to the upper part of the circle here, but that's just to demonstrate a point. You have no railway hub in Manhattan. Everybody has to go to Grand Central or especially Penn Station. Penn Station is ridiculously overcrowded and then they have to take subway to go to the south. So it involves sidetracking, sometimes even slight backtracking. There is no rail link directly to lower Manhattan. So the first step of my master plan was to construct, it involves the construction of east side access, which is actually under construction right now. As of now, it should be completed in December 2022, but it has been delayed too many times, so we cannot tell exactly when it will be completed. But it involves the construction of east side access, and then also Penn Station North and the new Hudson River Rail Tunnel. So this will be a four-track rail tunnel here, and the new connection between Penn Station and Grand Central. But basically, I want to sh all I want to show is that it's unified rolling stock and it allows more opportunities from trains of both New Jersey and Long Island to serve both Penn Station and Grand Central through a through running. There's no inefficient use of disjoint termini here. So that was my previous proposal and you could find it on a link of this video description. Now this webio I'm going to be talking about phase two, which is perhaps the most challenging phase of the entire project. It is constructing a new regional railway line through Lower Manhattan. It'll connect New Jersey to the west and dip down through Lower Manhattan and come out to a new railway terminus in the east. So it'll utilize big, not terminus, hubs. So it'll utilize big hubs outside Manhattan and connect these hubs to Lower Manhattan and commuters from suburbs can connect to subway lines at these hubs outside of Manhattan, easing convenience and reducing congestion at the Manhattan hubs. So for example, if you're coming from New Jersey, you know what, I'll use Long Island as a better example because I'm actually going to spend an entire video on this hub right here. If you're coming from Long Island and your work is in a certain part of Midtown Manhattan that is not served by either Grand Central or Penn Station, you get off at this hub here, and this hub will be served by many subway lines that all radiate into the city. Pretty much all portions of Midtown Manhattan can be reached from this station right here via subway. So it will reduce the congestion at the central Manhattan hubs and also increase convenience because this is not really backtracking. If you transfer to the subway outside Manhattan, 
instead of turning around within Manhattan. So this is part of a greater picture I've called outside connecting hubs. So these are the three layouts I discussed, hub ring layout, through hub, and outside connecting hubs. So as I said, the hub ring layout allows all parts of the city center to be served by a commuter railway line. It allows for easy CBD to suburb travel. However, it's very inefficient for travel within the city. For example, if your station is in the western CBD and your office in the eastern CBD, you would have to rely on overcrowded subways. And it doesn't even allow for suburb to suburb transportation. The other main type is through hub. So it fixes some of those problems, so it allows easy suburb to suburb transportation and unified rolling stock. But most of the CBD still remains underserved by the railway station. This is basically what the end of phase one will be. It will be a modified through hub design. And this causes backtracking for many commuters. So what this proposal will do will build a new branch to the south and build and expand hubs to the east and west. And this will relieve the pressures and increase desirabilities in regions outside Manhattan. Not to mention, it will funnel suburban traffic through these railway hubs outside Manhattan and connect them to other branching railway lines and subway lines going directly into the city. So land is cheaper obviously outside the suburbs. You can build bigger terminus and hubs outside the Manhattan area and just connect these to individual railway lines that are already existing going to Manhattan. It's much more efficient than either the hub ring layout or the through hub. So as a sneak peek, I'm going to show you the master plan. So the master plan just involves increased interconnectivity with Manhattan and surrounding counties. So the main point of the master plan is to just connect the Metro North Railroad to Long Island and Penn Station. And much of this work, it may seem like a big web right here, but much of this work takes place on existing alignments. The only portion that is a very big construction of new track is phase two, which is a construction of a new railway link between New Jersey and Long Island via lower Manhattan. And here is a, a comparison between what is there currently and what it will be after phase three, the master plan. And as I said, this does not involve as much construction of new railway lines and tunnels as it may seem. It's still a significant project, but it's not as much as it may seem considering all this web here. High interconnectivity versus currently no interconnectivity disjoint railway terminus. So as I said, today I'm going to be focusing on phase two, which is this connection of this link right here. And you may be wondering, what are these stations? Because to this point, I've just been showing abstract models of how the system works and what its motives are. But now I'm going to show you what these stations are exactly. I think you can probably guess some of them. So here's a line map of phase two. So the line will start at Secaucus. So there'll actually be a new branch connecting from the Northeast corridor bypassing Secaucus. This will allow easy train access from Central and Southern New Jersey and Philadelphia further south on the Northeast Corridor, single one train access to this new link I've proposed right here. In addition, the line going to Bergen and Capasay County will go through Secaucus and then connect to this trunk line going to the south right here. So as I said, this is basically almost, these are the outside hubs. It connects to two railway lines going into the city. This one goes to lower Manhattan. So the first station will be a local station. So not all trains will stop here. I'm actually proposing Amtrak to operate along the segment here to serve World Trade Center. But as of this proposal, I've not made Amtrak stop at Newport or Williamsburg. But Newport is well connected to the path WTC to HOB, which is World Trade Center to Hoboken, and the 33rd Street in Manhattan to Journal Square. So it's two path lines. It's well connected to the Hudson Bergen light rail, and it's also within well proximity of residential and commercial high rises and the Newport Center Mall. After that, the line will go under the Hudson River right here to World Trade Center. World Trade Center will be served by many different lines. This is the main terminus, not terminus, hub rather, in lower Manhattan. This is not a terminus all trains will run through here. It will be served by all the railway, the subway lines rather listed here, 2, 3, 4, 5, RW, ACEJZ. 
Most of these are located in the Fulton Street Station, but the ACE can also be connected at the Chambers Street Station. Amtrak, Amtrak will also stop here in addition to the Path Lines serving World Trade Center. And this will directly connect to the Oculus Mall. So if you know the Oculus Station, it's a big white board of a structure that took many years and many billions of dollars to make. It is used quite well, but I think it's better for the station to just utilize that as the main concourse rather than building a new high-end concourse for World Trade Center because that's already really high-end to begin with. After that, the line will continue. It will go under the Lower East Side and across the East River. I'm going to show you a map later exactly. And it will stop at Williamsburg which connects to the L train. After Williamsburg, the line will join the existing Northeast Corridor and Long Island Railroad at a newly constructed Queen Central Station. And Queen Central is the main eastern hub of the New York metropolitan area. So trains coming from the Bronx, Connecticut and Long Island will funnel into Queen Central. It will allow access to both World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan and Penn Station in Midtown Manhattan as well as an E, G, M, R and 7 lines. So if you think about where all these lines go, E goes through under 53rd Street and down to the 8th Avenue subway. G actually goes down the east, near the eastern bank of the East River through Brooklyn. So it's more indirect access to Williamsburg and downtown Brooklyn through the G train. The M train will go to, it also goes under 53rd Street but then goes under 6th Avenue. R goes under Broadway and the 7 train within 3 stations will be at Grand Central and eventually Times Square. So if you think about it, nearly all portions of Midtown Manhattan can be reached from Queen Central and this will be a major hub. I'll dedicate an entire video to this but this will be a 20 track hub connecting these 5 subway lines, many different railway lines in addition to Amtrak and all the trains coming from New Jersey, Long Island and even some Metro North trains. In addition, I'm going to propose an AirTrain LaGuardia extension. And the current AirTrain LaGuardia proposal goes from the airport to Metz Village Point, but this will add a western branch connecting to Queen Central because it's not that far and Queen Central will really be one of the central stations of Queens in addition to Jamaica. So with that out of the way, I think I've kept you waiting long enough. I want to show you the actual proposal I've drawn. So are you ready to see it on Google Earth? Let's go. So here we are. This is where the Northeast Corridor trains will deviate to the Lower Manhattan commuter rail tunnels. If you're interested into what all the colors mean, I'm going to place them in a key below. So these trains will go through a flying junction in which the westbound trains go underneath the new viaduct. This viaduct is a two track viaduct I proposed in my last review. The westbound trains will go underneath that viaduct and connect to Newark further south and the eastbound trains will just take a simple rank. So it's a simple flying junction. This is the same line that to the west connects to Kearney and Montclair. You can see the proportions of connections I've made from this line right here. So. This will be two tracks. This will be electrified by third rail. So again, the rolling stock will have to be modified to allow for this, but I think third rail is probably the most efficient way for this to go. This line will continue along this freight line, but then this freight line goes to this. I've actually proposed a bridge going above this lake here, and it'll connect to new viaducts. New viaducts connect to this, which will go to the New Jersey Transit line serving Hudson, not Hudson, Bergen and Passaic counties. Now you may be wondering, why do all of this when you can just use this existing line and this entire line right here to the Hoboken Tunnel? The Hoboken Tunnel is four tracks too, so it should have enough capacity, right? Well, it's not that. The problem is, A, you can, it's very, very difficult to branch off a tunnel from an existing tunnel. You'll have to close down the tunnels, not to mention, that running a TBM would be really difficult from here. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, if the tunnel were to start here, the grade would be too steep for it to be able to pass under the Hudson River efficiently without really low speeds. And I am making some Amtrak trains going on this proposal as well. They'll be going at a speed of up to 90 miles per hour. So they still need reasonably high speeds. 
So what I did is pretty interesting and I'm actually going to switch to 3D view right now to show you guys what I did. So this rail tunnel will actually pass under what is known as a long dock tunnel. The long dock tunnel is a 1.2 mile abandoned single track freight tunnel that goes underneath Western Jersey City. Now this right here, you may be wondering, it's only one track. Now this was actually really interesting for me. When exploring this area, I actually learned from 3D first before looking at online. This was really interesting to find. So just to the east right here was what was once a four track alignment known as a Bergen Arches. The Bergen Arches, there were four tracks through here and they were at a similar level seemingly as a long dock tunnel but they went, they went through here and they would allow for four track operations. It had a couple tunnels and this was all existing. You just had to rebuild the tracks and re-electrify them. The problem is right here and this is why I'm making them go through the long dock tunnel. So as you can see, the long dock tunnel is at a lower elevation. This allows for very easy access to a tunnel underneath the Hudson River. The Long Dock Tunnel finishes around 30 feet above, actually the, the Bergen Arches finish around 30 feet above the Long Dock Tunnel. So you would have to build a downgrade through this and you have Interstate 78 going through here so that would not really be feasible. The other thing is the Long Dock Tunnel is currently one track but it's important to note that it was once a two track tunnel. So it is possible to rebuild a two track third rail electrified line. It'll have to be third rail because I don't think the tunnel shape can easily support overhead catenary lines. So it'll be a two track tunnel. It'll be upgraded from one to two track going underneath this portion right here. It'll save a lot of cost as a tunnel is already existing and you won't have to excavate under the city because there are a lot of tunnel costs later on in the line as we will show. So after the long dock tunnel, the line will go on to a brand new two track alignment continuing under Interstate 78. And as you can see right here, Jersey City actually slopes up slightly into a tunnel and back there is a Newport skyline. That's exactly where this line will go. So in effect, using the long dock tunnel allows the line to go to a position that is very well for it to continue on to the Hudson River rail tunnels without significant grades. So there'll be two tunnels right here, each with one track. They'll be spaced around 15 to 20 feet apart from each other wall to wall. So again, these this is half width line, so each of this is only one track. It'll continue through tunnel boring machine method, so you won't have to disrupt roads, and continue under the Newport Center Mall and right here where the Newport Station is. The Newport Station is conveniently located right between River Drive and the Newport Center Mall. And I'm actually going to show you the layout of the station right now. So this is what I call an elevation layout of the Newport Station. This station will be a relatively deep station, around 100 feet below the surface. Now, this is only going to be a local station. The express trains, likely the Amtrak, will pass through a tunnel underneath the station right here. If you're wondering what the station's shape is, I'm going to show that next slide. So it's 100 feet below the surface and you have the Amtrak or the lower level trains 120 feet below. Now, interestingly, I've made the lower level the base level and the upper level is where the trains go up to because this crosses the Hudson River immediately to the east and you want tunnels to go as low as possible. But at the same time, you want to ease access for commuters. So making the commuter station slightly higher than the natural alignment would ease the, it would lower the costs of building all these escalators right here, not to mention decrease the time taken to go from surface level. The path station right here is around 50 feet below the surface and it'll be located in between two escalators on the outside connecting to the new regional rail station. This will all connect to a new expanded concourse directly above that will connect to River Drive in the east, Washington Boulevard in the center, and the HPLR and Newport Center in the west. So the Newport station will be laid out pretty interestingly. It is six tracks. It will be two express tracks, four local tracks, but its layout's interesting. Keep in mind that this is a really deep station, so building a typical express and local type station would not really be feasible. A, you would need an extremely large arch and B, the sound of trains passing 90 miles per hour through a station 
underground is absolutely not fun. It may kill some years. So I've decided to build two similar arches but extend one of the arches further down. So both the eastbound and westbound express trains will run underneath the local platform. And there are two pla there's two tracks serving the local platform. So it'll allow, it'll probably like some lines, for example, the ones coming from the Northeast Corridor could use one platform. The ones coming from Burger and Passaic County can use the other platform. It just allows for more flexibility, not to mention increased capacity. A similar situation exists on the westbound platform, but they don't have the express tracks underneath. So obviously these would converge into two tracks further east and west. This is looking west, by the way. So from here, I've lifts and stairs connecting to bridges, and these connect to escalator banks going up. So, yeah, so this is the new port layout right here. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you're wondering why I just placed this under an arch instead of a cent central layout, it would just, the like, construction of two arches is not as difficult as construction of three arches. And if for any, any reason, like any reason there's more capacity so that six tracks would be needed, these walls could be opened up and this could be an express stop. But as of now, I'm making this a local stop. But it's nice to see that putting future proofing into design is very easy to do in this case. So after Newport Station, the tracks will converge back to two tracks and continue underneath the Hudson River. Now this is one challenging part of the proposal because this is not directly perpendicular to the Hudson River. So cost will be slightly higher. So it is very possible that I reroute the line something like this, coming closer to the West Side Drive in Lower Manhattan and going underneath that to go to World Trade Center Station. But this entire section right here is a good 1.96 miles long until you reach this right here, Battery Park City and the World Financial Center area. So after that, this will go into World Trade Center Station. World Trade Center Station is located directly under Wesse Street and will have easy access to Church Street, Barclay Street, and the World Trade Center Mall and Oculus. So the new World Trade Center Regional Rail will be a bi-level rail station located between 115 and 135 feet below the surface. The upper level is 115 feet below, lower level 135 feet below. Again, note that the lower level is in fact the base level and the upper level goes above so that the station's mean elevation is less than the elevation of the track required to go underneath the Hudson River. It also has to be relatively deep because you have six path tracks located 60 feet below the surface and 60 feet is still relatively deep. So to allow for significant clearance to build a real arch station, you'll need to go quite a bit deeper. This will connect to new escalators just to the east of the path concourse bypassing them and it'll go to a space just on the western edge of the Oculus Mall. And if you know the Oculus Mall, that's its really expensive $2 billion bird of a building. But it's really nice, lots of shops, lots of potential to serve regional rail as well. And it connects to the Fulton Center as well, so serving 11 subway lines. It serves the 2, 3, 4, 5, A, C, E, J, Z, R, W. So all those lines and the path lines and the regional rail connect to the Oculus Mall, I think it may actually be a good case for how much money was spent. So this is a layout of how the station will be. It's very similar layout actually to the Penn Station North I did last video. So it will be eight tracks, four eastbound, four westbound. These will connect to a tickets hall and this tickets hall will be located 75 feet below the surface. So this will be 50, no, 40 feet above the upper level track. So this will allow for significant clearance above the two arches. This will connect to two escalator banks, one going to the north to Barclay Street and the other going to the Oculus and Path Station. And I would imagine this one is going to be much more used so there are going to be more escalators on this side. But it's nice to see that you have the option to both. And this is where most of the subway commuters will connect to as well. So after the World Trade Center station, these eight tracks will converge back to two tracks. Now I only show two tracks per here for simplicity, but there are eight tracks in this region right here. They connect to eight tracks. The interlockings are pretty simple, especially 
compared to Penn Station North, just simple crossovers and com combinations of tracks. So I'm not going to show the layout of that. It may be a waste of time. So after that, the line will continue deep under Lower Manhattan. It will go underneath many subway lines right here under Church Street, Broadway, and right here as well, the 456 line. And then it will continue actually under the Lower East Side. So it will go through here under Madison Street before finally going underneath a tunnel. Now this tunnel be, may be a little challenging because it goes directly underneath the span of the Williamsburg Bridge, but the Williamsburg Bridge towers are located here and here. So I don't think that tunneling underneath and crossing it would be that big of an issue. And this is much more perpendicular to the East River than the previous tunnel was to the Hudson River. After that, the line curves to the north and it will become six tracks again so it's a very similar layout as the Newport station and this is Williamsburg station it's another local station it is located underneath it is located between 3rd and 6th street and just underneath Bedford Avenue it connects to the L train so as I said the Williamsburg station will have essentially an identical layout as the Newport station. Now Williamsburg is also a longitudinal station so building a tickets hall in the center and escalator banks going to the southwest and northeast would be much more efficient than the other way around. And again with the, with the new Newport station there will be express tracks underneath one of the local arches but there will just be a curtain wall here so this is allow for easy expansion to allow for an express platform if capacity like if there is an additional need for capacity at the station. After Williamsburg, the six tracks converge back to two tracks and continue along Bedford Avenue until it ends right here. It will then curve to the north and I'm, I've been trying to follow existing roads quite a bit but you need to maintain relatively high speeds especially considering higher speed Amtrak trains will be using this. So it will go underneath Provost Street for a little and then enter Long Island City underneath a very small tunnel right here. So the line enter, uh, exits Brooklyn and enters Queens. This tunnel will finally end right here, under like right where, right right around where the Long uh, the Amtrak and Long Island Railroad tunnels come from Manhattan and Penn Station, and these will all go to Queens Central Station. I'm not going to discuss too much about it now but it's going to be a big hub five subway lines 20 tracks around and there'll be this is a mega project quite a few subway lines will have to be moved but many lines will be serving this station right here so the orange indicates new alignments of subway lines and the red indicates what subway lines will be out of service and or destroyed as part of this plan right here so as I said, the E, G, M, R, and 7 will serve this. If you are following me on Facebook and especially the Future of Transportation community on Facebook, if you have not seen it, by the way, I would recommend you join it. I actually propose the N and W to serve this as well. But coming to think of it, I don't think it's worth serving the N and W trains because A, in the master plan, this line will loop around to Astoria and Astoria will be served by this. And second, the R train goes to the same exact places that the N and W train will go. So, and third, the N and W line or the Astoria line is right here. So I would have to build a very long detour. Not to mention Queensboro Plaza would be closed. So I decided to keep those lines intact and only let the R train go to Queen Central Station. But I'm going to be discussing that in the next video. Another thing about Queen Central is that this is kind of sad, but I had to do this. The east side access tunnels will not serve Queen Central. This is due to the fact that the tunnels simply do not go far west enough to go to under Queens Boulevard. And building the station right here would not be closer to the central Queens and Queensboro Plaza area of Long Island City and Sunnyside. Not to mention that again these, these subways would have to detour a lot. Finally, though, I think that it's okay to allow certain trains to pass through Queen Central. The east side access tunnels will be marketed as direct access to Manhattan. But at the same time, if you want to switch trains 
to go to the subway to go to for example midtown west upper west for example near 57th street just taking the subway from here and going underneath one of the east river tunnels will be much more efficient so it gives commuters and the community an option so with that other way let's zoom out and see from where we have come so there you have it a proposal of a new commuter rail tunnel directly connecting to both jersey city and lower manhattan allowing single train access from long island new jersey and eventually even the metro north railroad underneath my master plan to go to the world trade center not all rail has to conglomerate in one part of the city the new york city's rail system was not well laid out because both the stations are only located in midtown manhattan and completely ignored lower manhattan now yes you could take a subway down here but that's really inefficient for this long of a distance just build a direct railway line also connecting to high speed railway services increasing the economies of both lower manhattan especially after the post construction of the new world trade center that's going to be a lot of economy as well also increasing the economies of newport and williamsburg and especially queen central station there's i think there is a potential for a big redevelopment in this region between sunnyside and long island city so this is part two of a master plan part one was the expansion of the northeast corridor and the connection between penn station and grand central part two was this new railway tunnel right here now next web you i'm going to be talking about specifics with queen central and show you how grand and what exactly this proposal will incur and finally two videos from now i'll show you the the new air train alignment as well as finally connections to the metro north to truly make new york city a unified commuter rail hub thank you so much for watching i really enjoyed making this video i hope i see you guys soon goodbye